You positive heads, welcome to a very special episode dedicated to none other than you, the pea heads themselves. I am your pea head enthusiast and hostess for the day, Alexa Hauser. I have been blessed to have the experience of helping out with Positive Head social media for the better part of a year. And through my digital interactions, I began to realize, as did Brandon, that we have some incredible beings listening to the show who are taking the information that Brandon puts out through the podcast and using it to transform their lives and create wonderful things. You listeners are all a huge, huge part of the life force that propels this show forward through time and space and we think it's time to bring forth some of you beautiful reflections and delve a little deeper into this collection of energy that is the positive head community so as we shine the spotlight on our listeners what we'll have them do is share their stories of how they attracted positive head into their life the transformation it's facilitated for them and what they're focused on creating now that they're in a more positive head space Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com slash Positive Head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com slash Positive Head. Check it out. Hello, all you positive heads. On this week's P Head Posse episode, our guest is positive head listener Callie Blake. Callie is an empath who comes from a long line of mystical and empathic women and considers herself a modern witchy woman who works closely with the goddesses to provide guidance and to raise our collective vibration. Hi, Callie. Welcome to the show. What's up, goddess? How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so good now that we're talking because (laughs) this interview, this P.N. Posse episode, I feel like has been in the works for several months. So I'm so happy it's finally manifesting right now. Oh yeah, all in divine timing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like, so just quickly before, you know, we get into it, it's um, when I first started doing this series, you were one of the interviews, like the initial interviews that was lined up. And I just remember at that time, just thing after thing kept happening where I kept having to reschedule your interview. (laughs) And then finally, I think we just were like, okay. And, you know, other things started happening for both of us. And then um, within the past few months, I've been like, you know, I see everything that you're doing on social media and all the art you're making. And you're like this incredible pole dancer, which has inspired me, (laughs) Um, which actually I took my first pole dancing lesson the other night after you inspired me um, because (sighs) so yeah, we'll have to talk about that in a minute. But, um, you know, and I just keep seeing all these things you're doing and everything in my body is like, she needs to be on the show. She like, you need to reconnect with this woman. So this with this guy. So um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just so happy this, this happened and this, this worked out. And um, do you, why don't you, you know, why don't you tell your story? Why don't you share your story with the listeners of just, you know, what your path has been like and how you've gotten to this point? All right. Well, to keep things not so (laughs) long and intense, I guess, um, I was raised in a small Midwestern town, very kind of like um, Christian based belief systems. Um, We went to church and everything like that, raised Catholic, kind of raised to like, you know, fear God in a way. I don't think that was the intention, but that's kind of how it came across. Um, My mom was always a really um, just mystical, I don't even know how to put it into words, that she's just always been this insanely magical light and person in my life. And I think that because of where we were raised, um, she felt a lot of pressure to kind of like mm, keep it a little hush hush and such. So I think like from a young age, I always knew that 
you know, I felt like a little different. I was always like, you know, playing with fairies and like mm-hmm. <laughs> talking to my imaginary friends and everything like that. But I subconsciously kind of learned that behavior to kind of um, push that down and kind of keep it quiet. Um, but as I grew older, you know, you get into your <laughs> angsty teenage years, as some of us do. And um, that's when a lot of this really started to kind of come forth. And um, I really had no idea what to do with it. Like, um, experiencing all these different energies as an empath and um, thinking I was like crazy and bipolar, being like happy one minute and sad the next minute and like having stomach pains for no reason and headaches for no reason. I was just like, what the heck is going on here? So it kind of drove me into this crazy I would call it a downward spiral (laughs) in a way. Um, But long story short, I have been listening to um, the Positive Head podcast since January of 2017. A dear friend of mine introduced this to me because it was really starting to align um, on my path of awakening. And I remember the first day that I listened to the podcast, I was like, holy crickets, Batman. This is like (laughs) so in tune with everything that I was thinking and like I would be thinking one thing and then like Brandon would answer the question I was in my head and it was just so aligned and I was like so shook at how synchronistic everything was I was just hooked from that moment on and ever since then life has just been this insane um experience of opening up on my mind and blossoming and understanding my talents and my abilities and ugh, it's been a world when I love it I love every second of it <laughs> yeah well you can I mean like I was saying you can see it I mean I'm I'm just sitting over here watching you from afar I mean you know seeing just you on social media seeing all the things you're doing and like you're inspiring me like your energy because I can feel how you're connecting with your like creative energy and like you're opening you're you're letting it through you know you're letting yourself express in all of these ways and it's so inspiring to see uh, not only because just because you know you're, you're doing it in all of these different ways but truly the stuff that comes out of you is like energetically I don't know. There's something so attractive about it. There's something that's just so magical about it. And it's so beautiful to see like someone who's really, like I said, allowing this to flow and manifest into tangible things, you know? Um, so what, what, you know, what, what kinds of things are you into for, you know, for people maybe who, who aren't following you like I am? Um, what, what have you, you know, how are you expressing all of this and how, what has your experience been like once, you know, opening the doors to this connection? Um, it's a lot. I really, I just like listen to my intuition and things will come to me. Like, um, Recently on a hike, I, this may be kind of gross, but um, I came across a giant pile of animal bones and something inside of me, which is like so outside myself. I used to be like so grossed out by like dead things and like, ugh. but um, something inside of me was like, oh my gosh, you need to take that home and clean it up and make something with it. Give this, give this thing life after death. And like, so I decided to do that. And now I have like all these raccoon bones that I'm like making earrings out of and, um, yeah. doing that and I um, saw them by the way they're beautiful <laughs> thank <Amazing>. you <laughs> thank yeah. you thank you um but just really listening to my intuition and um not second guessing myself so when an idea like comes to me it's not like I sit there and think about why I had it I just kind of act on it um mm. I've always kind of been an artist So I think just creating and making is just in my soul and my blood. And I can like, I like making things out of energy, like anything, like I'll go out on walks and I like collect feathers, little nature gifts, like Mm -hmm. cicada husks. I love all that stuff. So I got, I used to love those. I know, right. You like hang them on your shirt. We used to have competitions of how many we could (laughs) find as kids. They're so cool. (laughs) And it's, I mean, it's really awesome. You know, in that example, it's like, you're taking things, you know, I think a lot of us have been taught 
when we were younger, it's like, well, don't touch those things, right? Like the feathers or mm-hmm. the bones or yep. any of that because that's dirty. Yeah, and, they're diseased. Yes. Yeah. And truly, it's like what was happening before we lived in, you know, apartments or houses or modern society. It's like we were, you know, interacting with, we were part of nature and, and interacting with these things all the time. Um, so it's amazing. I love how, how you said that, that you're giving these bones new life, you know, Um it's that's that's so cool. And what what would you say to someone who's because I think, um, you know, I think that's what we're all working on here. Uh, everyone in this podcast is really trying to figure out for them their own selves. How can I listen better to my intuition? I mean, I myself go through different periods or sometimes I feel like I can hear it very clearly. Certain things will pop out. And then I just I I. It's like I hear the call. I'm sure that there's a lot of calls and I kind of rationalize my way out of it, you know? So um, what advice would you give to someone who's trying to connect more with their intuition? Like how can they hear clear more clearly or how can they get themselves to act on things um, it, more easily? Yeah, it's uh, it takes a little practice to get used to and kind of get over your own thought process. But it's really about just listening and with more than just your ears, it's it's listening with your heart. And um, there can be guidance in the, the something as small as the way a tree sways in the wind. And um, it's just really just taking the time to sit with yourself and listen to these things and. Um, really kind of set aside the ego, not so much try to fight it, but just set it aside for a minute. Be like, okay, I understand that this is something that you're wanting to question more, but I would like you to just kind of sit aside for a moment while this blossoms. And the moment you kind of put that aside and you just kind of dive right in, the whole world just opens up for you to listen to. And you start to receive all of these messages from everything whether it be a cloud in the sky that looks a certain way, or if you're looking at your window and you see a certain pattern in the grass, it's, it's all there. (laughs) You just got to really kind of look for it. It's in the tiny things. Mm, I love that. It's in the tiny things. That's so true. (laughs) And yeah, that's, Oh my gosh. I feel like the clouds talk to me all the time. I'm looking out in my window now and there's tons of clouds and I always feel like I see shapes and symbols and things in them. And it really is an amazing um, way to, you know, experience life to really come from that mindset and the belief that every single thing is talking to you at all times. It's really about you opening up to receive those types of messages, right? Um, Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, so... (sighs) So the thing is, it's like, I, you know, again, it's like, I really, I really admire people who have found a way to just kind of dive right into their intuition, to their, to their impulses, to their, because especially with creating things, right? Like you're creating a lot of art, you're creating jewelry, you're having all these ideas. It's like, one of the most common things that comes up for me, like I, I'm super creative as well. And I can go through these creative, um, like burst, right? But then oftentimes mm-hmm. I have that other, you know, it's definitely the ego going, well, what do you, what's this for? Like, what are you, what are you going to do with this? Like, what, what is this for? And so, um, do you have any ways, like when that happens, that like, do you have any processes when that happens, ways, ways of quieting it? Or are you, or is it really like you just mentioned, like talking to it and just be like, Hey, I need you to step aside for a minute. Um, I've really done both before. I've, I've gone through like creative lulls where um, I just kind of went through it and let it flow. Um, and then there were times where I did have to have a sit and a chat <laughs> with my ego and be like, hey, girl, you got to relax here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes you got to flow through it. And sometimes um, it's easy to just let go of it. It really just depends on the situation. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, what what are you working on right now? Um, right now, I am just trying to rekindle my flame with nature. Mm. And so I'm doing a lot of um, being outside and just um, meditating outside and going on adventures. There's this really beautiful place out where we live. I live in eastern Iowa. 
and um gosh everyone nobody realizes how beautiful eastern iowa is like you think of iowa you're like oh cornfields right <laughs> but it sounds beautiful to me it is and like there's this place out here called indian bluffs and um it's this nature preserve. It's like 800 acres. There's not really any trails. So I just like free walk. I just like walk. I don't really find a trail. I just kind of go on walks and um, connect with nature. I go out and I touch the trees and I find little things and it's just so magical. And I'm also really um, finally getting into being comfortable enough to do um, goddess readings for people. Oh. So. What is yes. that? Is that like goddess, like card readings or what? what is it yes. I have the, uh, the Doreen virtue, virtue. Um, goddess Oracle deck. I yes. love it. It's I have that. Such too. a, fun, I know it's such a funny story behind this deck. I actually, um, received this deck as a gift when I was like, Oh, I was really young. I was maybe like 15. And, um, that was at a time where I really didn't understand my magic or like anything like that I was like okay this is nice thanks and like so <laughs> I like, they kind of just sat around um absorbing energy for a few years and then one day I just decided to kind of take them out and play around with them and I just remember my hands being so hot like it was the strangest thing I was like oh my gosh what is going on here um so eventually I started um doing like kind of readings on myself Mm. did that for a couple of years. And then I started kind of branching out into um, doing readings for my loved ones who were open to receive. And that worked out really well. And then um, just kind of happened. There was a need for people um, wanting guidance. So I started offering those over Facebook just as like love readings. And um, now I finally heard the call. The goddesses are like, well, we need to um, keep a balance here. So you are giving something. So I finally gotten to the point where um, I feel comfortable charging a very humble, small amount for my readings just to kind of keep the energy balance. But Absolutely. it is just, it's great. I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. So where can people, um, you know, reach out to you if they want a reading from you? Everything I do really just over my personal Facebook page. I am not the best at like having multiple outlets. So you yeah. can just <laughs> direct message me on Facebook. My Facebook name is Callie Jean Blake. Uh, Jean, like what you wear on your legs. Blake, like the last name. <laughs> and it's Callie, like California. So yeah, you can just direct message me over there. That's also where you can get a hold of me if you ever want any like commissioned artwork or bone jewelry or anything funky like that. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. I encourage all of you to go check it out. It's like really just beautiful to look at. I'm inspired all the time. Um, Actually, I, <laughs> I don't know if you'd be open to this, but would you be open to giving me a goddess reading? Of course, of course. I don't know why. I just feel like it would be fun <laughs> if you're yes. into it. Awesome. Let yes. me run downstairs. I have shut myself up in the quiet oh, no. room really quick. No problem. No problem. <laughs> so one second. Let me you're grab fine. everything here. Okay. Come on, ladies, upstairs. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to him every day. You I know love why it. Not. It's fun. I love it. <laughs> Give him the love. Do you feel like a resonance with a particular goddess? Um, lately, definitely, have been really, really resonating with Aphrodite. Mm, that's a good. One. <laughs> yeah, she's been like my main lady. Mm. Do you okay? Okay, yes, go. You got it. Oh, go ahead. You can ask. I got to like no, shuffle I'm here. So. I'm just curious. You know, I because I, I feel like I other other people I've heard just feel very in resonance with. I don't know. It's like they can feel very distinctive energies from each goddess. And um, yeah, no, it just I didn't really have a question. I That's it. Oh, that's totally okay. It changes from day to day. I do like um, I'll do like a daily reading where I pull one card and um really just kind of ask that specific goddess to send me a message for the day and then I'll set her out on my altar so I can just look at her and be reminded constantly of the message all day. It's mm, wonderful. That's beautiful. All right. So I'm going to draw a couple cards for you here. Okay. Ooh. All right. 
So the first card that came up is um, got a sage. She is all about quiet time. And the little thing on the card, I'll tell you um, what her little message is. You're familiar with the deck. Mm-hmm. Um, take some time. So, sorry. Take some quiet time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. Um, the second card I picked up here is uh, Nematona. I'm still working on the pronunciation of some of these, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, she's all about creating a sacred space, create an altar, or visit a, a place of power to connect with the divine. So I think what's going on here is um, it's just a general reminder to um, remember to fill up your cup. You're giving a lot of energy, which is wonderful. You're giving, you're guiding, you're inspiring, but it's also really important to um, remember to do all those things for yourself, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, taking some time to just sit and be quiet and um, love on yourself a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, like something I did the other day was I, you know, we really just forget about our feet. I know this is kind of silly, but yeah. if you think about it, our feet ground us to this earth and our feet get us where we need to go. So um, we're also focused on working with our upper chakras, like our third eye and our crown. We often forget about the most basic, important thing that grounds us, which is our feet. So um, taking a little time to maybe give yourself a foot soak and um, rub on your feet, love on your feet a little bit, thank them for getting you through every day and walking you around (laughs) <laughs> I don't know why that just came to me, but yes, I think a little bit of love down, down there. That sounded funny, but <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. It's definitely true. Um, yes. No, just, um, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that sacred space. <laughs> I, I really, no, I, I resonate with that quite a bit actually. And um, also like the quiet time. I've had a lot of trouble meditating the past um kind of like two weeks. It's like, I can't get quiet, you know, and I don't usually have that hard of a time. So I do Mm -hmm. really think, yeah, this all, yes, that all resonates for sure. Exactly. Sit with yourself, find a crystal that, you know, you really resonate with and, um, throw some essential oils in your bathtub and sit with yourself and, um, just be quiet. And, you know, I'm sure you know, but meditation doesn't necessarily have to be like this idea of like sitting cross-legged, like floating in the air. It can just be like a quiet couple minutes to yourself where, you know, things just flow into your head. Mm. (laughs) I'm not sure how to explain it. (laughs) Yeah. No, sometimes I feel like sometimes like when you were talking about going on those free walks, I I Mm -hmm. do that as well around the city. I just leave my phone at home. I take my dog and I just walk for a really long time. And I feel like in that Mm -hmm. space, uh, you know, things flow into my head because I just really get out of it's like I can get out of myself kind of um, and and, and get into myself in a way. Um, It's like I can actually. Exactly. Yeah. So there definitely, I agree. There's, there's, you know, meditation doesn't have to be um, exactly like the way that we think of it. There's moving meditations. Mm -hmm. There's all different ways for sure. Exactly. Awesome. It's so true. I feel like that kind of goes along with the whole lines of like spirituality too. I feel like, I know, especially for me, when I first kind of finally came to myself and started, um, you know, awaking, I had this idea of what spirituality looked like Mm. and what it should feel like and how I was supposed to act. And I feel like that can be kind of a slippery slope. I found myself comparing um, my journey and my path to a lot of um, other people around me who may have been following this path a little longer. And um, I was like, well, why am I not doing all these like big giant things? And I'm like, you know what? I finally came to the realization like spirituality does not have a look. It doesn't have a specific feel to it. It's very personal. Mm. So I, I think that, that, yeah. I love that because that's, that's so true. That's something I've been feeling recently. It's like, I, I have a download recently that, you know, um, self uh, improvement can also be a, a sort of addiction as well. Like the 
and what I mean by that is it's amazing that we all, all of us here, you know, we, we're constantly want to expand and evolve and that's the, the most amazing mindset to have. Right. But when it's kind of, I feel exactly. like for me, I can get into the trap of like, Oh, I'm spiritual. So that means like I'm listening to Abraham all the time. I'm either listening to positive head. I'm constantly trying to find the way that I can be better and more and all of these things. And suddenly you realize it's like, if you're constantly thinking that you need to be better and more and that you're not good enough yet, and you're always finding these things, that you think need to be better and that that's what spirituality is it's like you know then you're never actually satisfied with yourself you're never actually enjoying life and I feel like for me somewhere along the way it got kind of tied up in my head that like spirituality was almost like a sacrifice in a way like well I'm gonna you know I'm just gonna like really work on me all the time and that means like a lot of the the normal things that everyone is doing it's like I'm kind of on the outside of that and you know, I think that is a misconception. It's like spirituality is something that we all have. Like you said, it's very personal and it doesn't look any sort of way. And just because you're a spiritual person doesn't mean that you can't like live normal life, like that you can't be out amongst humans. It's like, you know, you can. <laughs> I, I really do think, though, sometimes like we think that like that's we need to be, exactly true. Yes. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. It's like. Like you're not spiritual if you go to the bar and drink wine with your friends. Yeah, Finger yeah, shame. No, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I think we all need to be we all need to be a little bit easier on ourselves, you know, um, and and a little bit more um, looking at spirituality not as like this is my lifestyle, right? But looking at mm-hmm. spirituality as like this is a component of my lifestyle, like. I have a life and spirituality is some a piece of that. Like it's a, it's a piece that fuels me, right? It's a piece that connects me. It's a piece that enhances me, but it's not the, my life, you know? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And it's like a comparison that almost like sets us up for like a lack mindset, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like seeing, uh, I just remember like the first couple of months of my awakening, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do all these things. I need to like learn about Abraham and like learn every <laughs> person in the entire world. Yeah. And like, oh, I just felt like so rushed. There's no need yeah. to rush your journey. Like the journey is the journey, right? Yeah. <laughs> the path is the journey. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, to that, it's like, um, It truly, it really is the truth. Like in those moments that I think you can give yourself the space and the, and, and allow yourself to relax and not get, because I, uh, you know, um, adding on to this topic, it's kind of like spirituality has become another to-do list for us. Like kind of like you're saying, okay, now I have all these things to do. And it's like, that's what I feel like, you know, we came to spirituality to, 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 to rectify or like to put in balance. It's like spirituality is the understanding that life is not about a to-do list, right? Life is about the moment and life is about um, relaxing into things, not mm-hmm. making things happen. And so it's almost as if spirituality has now ha- ha- created it or we've created our own spiritual to-do list, which is, you know, kind of defeating the whole purpose. So um, I, I do think, you know, for me, it's been coming up a lot lately. It's I, so this is why the, your your reading of like, you know, soak your feet, like appreciate your body, you know, relax, like take time for yourself, love on yourself. It's mm-hmm. it's so it's so relevant for me because that's what keeps coming up. It's like it's like feeling like you have a to do list feels like a chore. So why that's mm-hmm. not life? That's not how you let things flow. You flow let things flow by feeling awesome and feeling like, wow, today anything could happen or like today I am going to be inspired, you know? You you create this. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That is exactly it. Oh, yes, girl. Yes. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for my goddess reading by the way. That thank you. I didn't say thank you and that was that was oh. lovely. Don't thank me. I'm just the middleman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a lovely middleman, so thank you. Well, thank you. A middle goddess. A um, <laughs> middle goddess. I yes, like that. <laughs> I like that too. Um, well, so what is one thing, Callie, that you think would benefit every pea head to know or understand as they continue on their own journey? <sighs> um, I would definitely say... Um, you don't need to create this big extravagant life to really just be happy and to inspire people. Um, 
all it takes is just a smile and a kind word to somebody else to inspire them. And um, like, it's as simple as going to the grocery store. And um, when somebody meets your eyes, which happens a lot, you know, for me being a girl with a lot of tattoos and dreadlocks in a 5,000 <laughs> town in the middle of Iowa, it's just giving them a big smile and, um, just a nice hello, or I like your shoes, or you're rocking that outfit, or just something like that. And it really can just, I don't, I really don't think that we have an idea of how powerful our words are to people that, you know, we don't even know. Mm. And it's just all about, um, you really don't realize how you inspire people every day, you know, like, <laughs> like you're telling me I'm such an inspiration. I'm like, wow, really? Thank you. But um, it's, it just goes back to the little things, you know, there's no reason to feel like you need to um, go out and memorize all these crystals and cook up all of these spells and do all of these things to inspire people. All you need to do is just be true to yourself and you'll be an inspiration just by doing that. People are going to be looking at you and being like, wow, look at that person. They're really just doing what they want, like kind of putting their middle finger to the air, being like, I don't care what anybody thinks. Like, I'm just doing me. And that alone, I think, is so inspiring. Absolutely. I mean, I'm inspired just listening to you talk about I'm like feeling all inspired right now because (laughs) that is just so true. I mean, on all levels, like one, just that you don't know how even a smile or just a kind word can truly turn someone's day around. I've had multiple people tell me recently, oh, my God, I was having the worst day. And then I just went to like buy something and the guy at the cash register was just so nice and he just smiled at me. And then my whole day was turned around. And it's like we have so much power that we don't even, you know, we think, like you said, we have to, part of us thinks we have to create this huge movement and and affect millions of people and all of this. And it's like, I think the best sort of inspiration or the best way to affect people is like you're talking about, like just on the ground where you are in your community, you know, because when you affect those people, they're going to affect their families and their communities and so on and so on. Um, And um, and also I love, you know, the idea of. Uh, just uh, the most inspiring thing is just being true to who you are and being your unique expression because it gives other people permission to be their unique expression. People who feel like exactly. Yeah. Like feel like everyone around me is doing this thing. I mean, something that's been coming up for me recently in this area is like, you know, there's so many ideas about when you hit a certain age, you know, about getting married and having kids and um, certain ways of doing things like that and certain traditions and, mm. and how our parents feel about it. And, you know, the parent thing is being, becoming a really big thing for me. And it's so interesting to me how, like, you know, my parents, for example, like really care about the way that that all transpires for me. And I know that mm-hmm. they love me, like they love me and that's why. But it's also kind of, I'm starting to see how, like, you know... That's a story for them. That's their story. Like, that's something they're worried about for themselves. Like, they're worried about it. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with me. Like, I'm here to tell my own story, right? Just in this example. I'm here to express myself in a unique way, not in a way that's been done before necessarily. And I think so often we get so pressured into just following the same old pattern, right? Because of the other people around us. But that's really the opportunity that we have to break the pattern, to break the mold and to say, I don't ha- we don't have to do it this way, guys. Like we can do it this way. Like this is a totally exactly way. So yes, yes, that's awesome. That's great advice. That's I, I love that. Um, and and not only that, Callie, but I think you know the image that you gave with being in the grocery store, right? And you're like, and I have like a million tattoos and dreads and all this stuff. And like you gave an image that like you really stand out, and then you smile, meet someone's eyes, and you smile and you say hi. I mean, even that, it really, it's like as you know, the, the people listening to the, the community listening to this podcast right now, I think are the people who are very alternative and, you know, are, are quote, you know, more unique, I'd say, and express themselves um, much more vividly than than maybe some of the others. Right. Because we're all very tuned mm-hmm. into this. And it's like I think it's our job in a way to um, to connect with others and show them that this isn't. I think there's a lot of kind of misconceptions about 
us, like the artists and the, the, um, like you're saying, like people, like you're saying you, you express yourself kind of differently. You kind of stand out. Right. And it's like you meeting someone else's (laughs) eyes and saying hi and connecting with them on a human level. It really can change their perspective of what expression of what this expression means. Does that make sense? Like, yes, it, yes, exactly. It can, it's like, you don't have to be afraid of me because I have a million tattoos. I'm actually a really nice girl. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like this isn't a barrier really. It seems maybe we've been taught that it is, but it's, there's no barriers here. We're all human. And it really teaches, I think, um, you know, everyone else that like they're, the, the, that we're, we're, it's a, just a good way to connect on a, a soul level on a, on a human to human level. So I think that's awesome. And uh, exactly. Oh, that's great. Well, so, okay. Do you have any, um, you know, on this podcast, we love, love, love stories. So do you have any fun or inspiring stories of manifestation or synchronicity or any fun, magical stories you want to share with everyone? Yeah, I've got a couple. Actually, one happened yesterday. Oh, awesome. (laughs) Um, I've got like a little manifestation story and then I've got like a big one too. So we'll start small first. Okay. Okay. So yesterday my husband and I went kayaking down the Kokoda river here in Eastern Iowa. And, um, so we're rowing along, rowing along, enjoying the beautiful scenes and the sounds and everything. And, um, I'm sitting there and in my mind, I'm like, you know what I could use right now? I could use a cold beer. That sounds really good. <laughs> so sure enough, not even 10 minutes, 10 minutes later, we, um, come up on a group of floaters and those are the, they just have like river tubes and they're all kind of in this big little packed and in the middle they have a tube with a big cooler so we go by and like kind of exchange some words about how beautiful it is and they're like hey you guys want a beer and I'm like oh Oh no way yes Yes. so um, (laughs) they um (laughs) shot us a little beer and then a couple um maybe a mile down the road at the river I guess (laughs) um my husband and I were talking because we had just gotten off on a sandbar and we were walking around and um it's a little rough on our feet and we were like, you know, we need to get some water shoes or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, that would be a great idea. So we get back in our kayak. And once again, not even 10 minutes later, we roll up by a sandbar. And it is like just this abandoned pair of little water sandals. Like nobody's around. There's no way that could be any buns. And they're my size. So I was like, wow. score. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a beer and a pair of shoes. The river provides everybody. Amazing. <laughs> I love that. Yes. And then um, kind of a bigger story, which blew my mind. So um, we recently moved out here. And as I was packing, I used to do a lot of journaling as a little girl. And like even into my, um, as a young woman, I still journal a lot. But I remember now, I forgot about it, but um, I came across this list that I had written when I was like maybe 13 or 14 years old. And um, I remember it was my mom who had told me, um, write out what you want and focus on it. And I was all into like, oh, the romance of dreaming, you know, of my (laughs) future husband and everything like that. So I found this list as I was packing up my old house and my jaw like dropped to the floor this list describes my husband to a T wow. tall, um, smart, brave, even physically like dark hair, dark eyes, um, really manly and rugged looking. And I was just like, Oh my God, this is so cool. I was a master manifester at 14 years wow. old. Like, let's see what we can do now. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. So, Yeah, it was just so cool to find that. And I was just like, wow. And I think the best way to like manifest things are to think about them really, really intently and then like forget about it for a little bit. Yeah. And then it just kind of comes to you. Absolutely. Those are the best, (laughs) those are the best types of manifestations. The one, I mean, that's, that's what Abraham's always talking about, right? It's like life will surprise and delight you. And that is, you know, the best, it's the best um, because when you're physically trying to like make something happen and go out there and let's say find a guy, you know, with all those characteristics, it's not as fun as like finding that letter and being like, wow, I created this person. This is amazing. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I know. 
That's incredible. It was like a very practical magic moment right there. Yes. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love and I'm that. currently manifesting a, a trip to Burning Man in the next couple of years. So, oh my gosh, I am you are so meant, excited! You are meant for Burning Man. Um, I'm actually going. Yes, I'm going in a week, and I am underprepared. And you absolutely, if you do come, you have to be in uh, the camp that Brandon started with me. Um, if you if you want, I'm, I'm telling you that you have to, but you don't have to if you want to. But I feel like it, it, whenever you do come, you'll have to join that camp because it would be really fun. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like I would definitely probably like seems I've never like, you know, done a burn before. I would definitely feel um, more comfortable being surrounded by people who've maybe done this before. And plus it's like pee head. It'd be like a big pee head meetup. Like how could you not say no to that? Exactly. <laughs> In the most magical place on earth. It's like Disneyland for a positive head. <laughs> exactly. Literally it is. Um, no, it's yeah, it's great. Well, I'm looking forward to connecting with you there someday or hopefully before then I'm really hoping that I I feel like some event is on the horizon maybe in 2019 for everybody to link up finally but we will we will see about that um it's funny that you said that 2019 is definitely something I've been feeling too I'm like something's gonna happen this year I don't know what it is but (laughs) something good Something good. Oh, Something yeah. Good. All right. Cool. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Callie, is there anything else that you feel so called to share with the, the P-Head listening audience before we sign off here? Um, I guess, like, my final little words would be, like, go out and find your truth. And once you find it, shout it at the rooftops and don't be ashamed of it because you will be so surprised at how inspiring that is to other people. Like you said, giving them permission to finally go and speak their truth. And then that's just how we like slowly but surely raise this collective consciousness that that we want. And, you know, it starts with the smallest little thing. I love that. Yes, absolutely. I echo everything you said that was said beautifully. Um, And again, if you're listening to this and uh, you want to connect with Callie, definitely reach out to her on Facebook, Callie Jean Blake, um, and check out all her arts and things. And Callie, this was just awesome to connect finally. Um, You know, I hope we keep in touch. And, um, and, oh, and thank you for inspiring me to go to my first pole dancing class. It was so fun and uh, something that I've been like wanting to do for a while and it was just it was really it was really fun and I I met some cool people there so thank you for that oh you are so welcome thank you absolutely (laughs) all right everybody that's it for this week's episode if you're a listener with a story to share and are interested in being featured on a future episode of this special series you can email me at alexa at positivehead.com Also, if you're craving more consciousness-elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000-plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear Brandon constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration, and if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place we know of to do it period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com slash positive head. Check it out. Otherwise, tune in next Friday for another P-Head Posse episode. And until then, as Brandon always says, journey well.